Let me greet the saints of the Most High in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a privilege, what an honor to share the words of the Lord with God's people everywhere. No one ever thought that time will come where God's people will not be able to come together and enjoy the fellowship. Um, now, there we are. But I want to say one thing. No matter what the church is facing, what the world is facing, this should not surprise God's people who read the scriptures. Um, we should have expected this. This place, this world is not our home. Maybe the Lord has allowed COVID-19 to bombard us the way it does, so that we be reminded that no matter how comfortable we may be in this world, Still, we are not home yet. We need to lift up our eyes beyond the horizons of this world and see the home above where we will abide forever. By the way, I need to make a disclaimer before we go deep into the word of the Lord. Um, I'm damaged, permanently damaged by stewardship and evangelism. So these two things, no matter what the topic may be, they will always find their way. Stewardship will always find its way in and evangelism will always find its way. It will get the best part of me uh, because I believe I'm here for nothing else but just for that. But I just want to share the words that are in my heart now. The title of this short sermon is putting God where he should be or setting our priorities right. You know, friends, we may in our family have set the times in the morning and the times in the evening to connect with heaven. But at times, other event may disrupt a well-organized program in that family. Now, and we have to move times and event around. You will, you will always move the less important things for more important things to come. Now, you will find that we shift prayers, prayer times, to allow other more important things to occupy the space. The very space that prayer occupied. Now, I'm trying to say, come what may, God must remain at his, on his throne. Other things must be moved around, but not God. I may have my budget well drafted. Unforeseeable circumstances comes and disrupt my budget. Guess what? It is, it is the portion that God has identified as his that gets messed up so that other bigger and more important things may occupy the, the, pace, the space. So I'm trying to say, come what may. I love what Muslims do. If it's Friday, 12 o'clock, come what may, the shops are closed down. Everything stands still because it's their appointed time. I'm saying, my friends, my covenant with God must remain under any circumstances. But let's rush to the words before time uh, 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 it's against us. I just want us to go to the book, to the book of First Samuel, the fourth chapter. You may have heard these words. Verse 1 reads, Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and encamped beside Ebenezer, and the Philistine encamped in Apec. Then the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel. 
And when they joined battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. It's unbelievable, saints. You know, whenever Israel went to war, the war did not depend on their ability, but it always depended on the power of God. So when they went out, victory was always guaranteed because God was fighting on their behalf. But the victory always depended on the, on the, on the, on the connection, intact connection they had at that particular moment with God. Friends, this time they went out as usual. Guess what? When they came to war, Israel was shocked. 4,000 men were defeated. And they wondered what has gone wrong. Guess what? They went back, sent servants to Shiloh, where they now picked up right from the sanctuary the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant. They, they, they thought they lost because the Ark of the Covenant was missing. So they went. When the Ark was brought into their encampment, guess what? Man, they celebrated. They celebrated like God himself is here. Listen, friends. The Ark was there, but still, God was not there. You know, friends, there are times when we will have everything in the right place, hoping that by putting the right things in the right place, God will be in our midst. Friends, when God is not there, I love Jesus when he says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be. Friends, what attracts God in a place is God-likeness. If, if, if we create the atmosphere that is heavenly, that atmosphere draws the presence of God because where, where, where the presence of God is is the same as where God is. So, but friends, everything can be in the right place at the right time, the right way. But if the atmosphere of heaven is not messed, you won't see God. His name may be praised, but if God's likeness is not prevailing, you won't see the almighty God. If there's one man who cannot compromise the standard, it's God. Friends, here comes the covenant, the, the Ark of the Covenant. Israel was just scratching where it was not itching. Friends, when the Ark arrived, oh, they danced. My Bible says even the, even the ground shook to a point that even on the other side of the mountain where the Philistines were encamping, even there the ground shook. Hey, the, the Philistines were shook were scared. They said, listen, we know those people. Mm, friend, we know how mighty they have, they, they have the most powerful God. That their God humbled the Egyptians. Their God drove them through the Red Sea. We might be the next victim. Let's organize ourselves. We know how powerful their God, their God is. But let's, let's organize, prepare ourselves that we do not become like the Egyptians to the Israelites. Friends, the second time around, it's like, to me, reading the passage, it's like they were better off without the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. They were worse off in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. Because when they lost the, the second time around, they lost worse than before. When everything, everything in their estimation was right. But there was one thing. God was not in his rightful place. Friends, at times we never 
hey, I'm scared of this one. You know, at times everything seems to be right. Blessed are those. You know, when Christ was hanging on the cross, my Bible says there was that one moment when God looked the other way. And immediately, Christ felt the absence of God. He immediately cried and said, Father, Father, why forsake me? You know why he, he, he felt the, 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 the absence immediately? Because he was so much used to the presence of the Lord. So the absence was immediately, I mean, realized. Some of us are so far from the Lord. So much that his presence, his absence is almost similar to the presence. Because we, don't, we have never enjoyed, come to the level where we enjoy the, the sweet moment with God. So when we have lost that one, we don't see the difference. Oh friends, I hate that. Failing to see, to, 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 to know the, the, the difference, to differentiate the difference between the presence and, and, and the absence of the Lord. Listen, Israel, the Lord had left, but still they were going to the sanctuary as usual. Hey, calling upon amen and hallelujah as if God was there when God had lost. Blessed are those who could feel, sense the atmosphere that no, everything may be right, but God is not here. Friends, Israel did not know until they were defeated, dismally defeated, then that's when they realized that the glory has departed. To cut a long story short, friends, verse 12 says, while they were gone, there was a prophet remaining behind, Eli who was worried. You know, Eli was not worried about the victory. Eli was worried about the thing of God among in the midst of the people. His prayers were, Lord, come what may, may the ark of the covenant, your thing, your holy thing, that is in our possession. Come what may, Lord, may we never lose that one. Blessed are such people that while others worry about visible, tangible things, others worry about spiritual things over material things. Right now we look, friends, no one can secure jobs. The future is unknown, only known by God. The future looks so dim. We are expecting the worst. Friends, this, this, if, if we focus on the signs that we see, the rand that keeps plunging down, the jobs that, that keep disappearing, if we focus on these things, if we focus on the, on the COVID-19, friends, but lift up your eyes, from all these uncertainties and fixed your eyes on him who is above all this. I'm telling you, there's a passage I love, First Thessalonians 4, verse 13. We only read it when we have lost our loved ones. Where Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant of this one fact. As, as, as though, and, and mourn as those who mourn without hope. But if we believe that Christ died and rose, so them that are asleep in the Lord will also rise. Friends, Paul is saying, you know, in every circumstances, if we are hit hard by circumstances, let's mourn, let's complain, let's worry. Not the way the world worry. Because friends, we always have hope in our Lord, our God, Jesus Christ. Friends, Eli was worried. What about the covenant? Friends, he, the old man could not go to war and witness all these things. 
but he waited for somebody to come and give him the report. Guess what? The Bible says, came one man to give the man, the old man, the report. And the Bible says, now when, they, when he came, there was Eli sitting, in, sitting by the wayside, watching for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the men came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, what does the sound of this Talmud mean? Verse 15, and Eli was 98 years old, and his eyes were so dim. So the, the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter. Listen, there has been, there has been a great slaughter. This did not worry Eli. To say thousands have died, it didn't worry him. Listen as, hey, and three has been great, there has been great slaughter among the people. Also your two sons, Hophni and Phineas, are dead. And the ark of God has been captured. Listen, when he was told that a great slaughter, he stood still. He could stomach it. When he was told that his sons, Hophni and Phineas, have also died, he stood still. He could. These are the things that all angles affected him. Listen, but the Bible says, when he was told that the ark of the living God has also been captured, the Bible says he could not take it. Oh, my brother, any... You tell me my girls, Nobile and Samke, are dead. I'll die too. But listen, he's told that his two sons are gone, but he stood his ground. But when he was told that the holy thing of God, oh, my brother, my sister, COVID-19 is ravaging everything around. Economic is plunging down. Everything is upside down. Most of us are worried about cash in our pocket. We are worried about the future. Who is there to think about the things of God in our midst? The church of our evangelism stores strife to worry about permanent things among temporal things. We are so, we spend sleepless night thinking about our future, our, 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 our investment, everything. And we worry less about the mission of the church. We worry less about, 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 about the means to sustain the mission, which is tithe and offer. We don't worry much as we, marry, as we worry about the things that directly, I'm not saying don't worry about this, but let's worry about first things first. You know, when Jesus says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all other things shall be added. You know, there are things that should be first. First thing first. Friends, when we have our priorities set up well, God has no choice but to come and do the impossibilities. You know, friends, you know, friends, Ellen G. White's, in the book entitled Life Sketches. Can't remember the page, but don't worry about that. Where she says, we shall have no fear for the future unless we forget how the Lord has led us and how he has taught us in the past. You know, friends, where man's ability reach the point of no return, that's when he sets aside and the Almighty kicks in such circumstances, such times demands the intervention of the Lord so that you and I can say, what a God we serve. But we worry and we think the solution is within our hands. Friends, let me tell you, early upon hearing that the holy thing, why, why was he worried about the holy thing? Because among every other thing, Nothing was so precious, 
so crucial, like the holy thing that was in their possession, a symbol of God's presence in their life. Friends, come what may, no matter what a storm we go through, hold on the Lord. Never let go. Because, friends, we may have everything, but if we don't have God, even that which we have, we don't have. But if we have the Lord, we may lose everything. But if we have the Lord, we have even that which we don't have. We have even that which we have lost. Friends, I'm worried about this COVID-19. It's going to test everything around you. It's going to test your marriage. It's going to, 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 to test our jobs. It is going to test our own health. It's going to start, test my connection with God. Some of us, because we are no longer now able to attend church service, some of us spiritually are going to grow very weak because we were depending on other people. This is the time to remain standing, even you are standing alone. Keep your intact. Keep your connection with God. Keep the Lord in his rightful place. Set your priorities right. Friends, the last part I want to share with you that also broke my heart. One of the son's wife was heavily pregnant. Guess what? When the woman also received the news, my Bible says, Immediately she went into labor, gave birth to a child that she was not able to look at. But she had enough strength to be around and to give the child a name, Ichabod, which means the glory has departed. Friends, only at the end of everything, when they land, that long time, Ichabod, the glory has long departed. Friends, I want to ask the question, is the glory still existing in your house? Are you happy with your walk with God? Are you sure it is, it is stable? Are you sure you are well connected with the Lord? Some of us will, long, will, will walk a long way thinking, hoping that our house, our family is still in the hands of the Lord. Yet, Ichabod, the glory has long gone. Friends, as we get closer to the Lord, that's when we feel and realize the need of Him. But when we drift further and further, that's when we, we become more and more comfortable with our, our, our spiritual status. I'm, I'm praying that may you have a sharp conscience that will give you no peace until everything is restored. I'm praying for men like Eli. Men like the wife of Phineas who gave birth before time just because the glory of oh, friends I'm saying before I pray for you. Through the storm of COVID-19, let's worry more about the things of God. Let's worry more about the souls that need to be gathered before the heavier storm hits us. Friends, how are things? Where are you? Where is God among your priorities? Is he first? Can you do without other things but can't do without God? Can you reach a point where you can say, I can lose everything but not God? It's my prayer that you as a child of God, 
remain faithful. Don't make any adjustments. Instead, the adjustments that you need to do is to tighten the bond between you and your God. So that, friends, the more COVID hits, the more we hold firm on the Lord. Not, not, not. Right now, every sermon, we are busy encouraging our people because they may lose everything. Oh, friends, this is the time to say thank you, God, for reminding that this, this is not our home. I want to tell you, tough times never last, but tough people do. Hold on. Our God is mightier than the storm we are going through. I want to, I'm not a prophet, but I want, nor a son of the prophet. You know, this church, after COVID-19, this church will not disappear when the disease disappears. We will, we will, up, we will appear on the other side more stronger. Very soon, some of us will thank this storm that it has brought everything up to the right level. May you and I, during this time, leave the Lord in his right place. During this time, never shift your prayer times at home and so that maybe your favorite TV program takes the best time. Let, let other things be moved by prayer, not other things moving your prayers. It is my prayer. May the Lord God, the Almighty, who sustains my life, bless and keep you. Fear not, friends. Look beyond. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Not because they are tough, but because the tough God is within them. This is my prayer. Let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we have no other refuge. We have no other God but you. Oh, Father, this is the moment where our God must intervene and prove that this is not our job that sustains us. It's not the future that looks bright, but it is your presence. It is our connection, in that connection with you, dear Lord, that sustains us. Thank you, old Father. Bless us. Bless everybody. I pray for those who are sick. Oh, dear Lord, throw your hands. Protect and heal. In the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.